If you ever had a bad day at work, remember, it could be worse. At least you weren't caught by a 40-ton whale. You didn't spend 30 seconds trapped inside something alive, thinking, well, this is how it ends. Unlike the hero of our story, a lobster diver who became an accidental passenger carried around by a humpback whale. Thankfully, humpback whales can't swallow a human being for real. Not because we're not tasty, but because it's physically impossible. Despite being potentially really huge, their throats are surprisingly narrow, about the size of a grapefruit. When they open their mouths, they can be as big as a small bedroom, roughly 10 feet wide and 8 to 10 feet long. But once closed, there's barely any space inside and you would end up wrestling with a tongue the size of a car. Also, humpbacks are filter feeders, not hunters. Instead of chewing or biting, they take in huge gulps of water. Then they close their mouths and push that water back out through their baleen plates, basically trapping krill and small fish like a giant living colander made for seafood. If something unexpected ends up inside, the whale says, oops, wrong food, and tries to get rid of it. Which was the good news for Michael Packard, a diver who had an encounter in 2021. While diving for lobsters, about 30 feet below the surface, he got ambushed. Suddenly, everything went dark. He felt pressure all around him and realized he was moving upward. He estimates that he spent 30 to 40 seconds inside the whale's mouth before it surfaced, shook around, and spat him out like a dog accidentally biting on a lemon. You see, when the whale realized that Michael Packard was not his dinner, it had to go to the surface. It's the only place a humpback can really spit something out properly. That's because whales are mammals, which means they have more in common with humans than most sea creatures. For example, they don't have gills like fish. Instead, they breathe air through blowholes on top of their heads, which are like giant nostrils. Every few minutes, they have to come up. The fascinating creature takes a breath and exhales a big blast of misty air that looks like a mini fountain. That famous whale spout is just a powerful exhale. Depending on the species, they can stay under the surface for 20 minutes to over an hour. But how is this possible? Basically, their lungs work like oxygen power banks, and their muscles are packed with myoglobin, a special protein that stores oxygen for long dives. When they submerge, their heart rate slows to just a few beats per minute, and blood flow is rerouted to only the organs that really need it. It's like their entire body switches to power-saving mode. And if that isn't impressive enough, humpbacks have a few more ocean superpowers, like being able to sing. And yes, that's the actual scientific term. Male humpbacks produce long pattern sequences of sounds that can last for hours. But they aren't random noises. They're structured, almost musical, something best described as deep moans and high squeaks. But the coolest part is that these songs can travel for thousands of miles underwater. Sound moves much farther in water than in air, so the ocean becomes one giant concert hall. They can bounce and echo across the ocean, reaching whales miles away like the sea's own radio station. Only male humpbacks are known to sing, and scientists think they do it mainly during the breeding season. Some believe it's a way to attract mates, while others think it helps them communicate or compete with other males. What's amazing is that all the males in one region sing the same song, but it slowly changes over time. Basically, every year, the males all sing roughly the same tune, but as the season goes on, tiny variations start to appear. They sing the same song until one of them gets inspired, changes the tune slightly, and this version becomes trendy. Sometimes the whole song gets replaced by a completely new one that moves across the seas from one population to another. Scientists think whales are basically learning from one another, passing new hit singles across the ocean. Humpback whales are known for taking the longest road trips in the animal kingdom. They migrate thousands of miles from cold feeding grounds near the poles to warm waters where they mate and raise calves. And they sure love to eat, sometimes up to 20 hours straight. When the humpback whale accidentally caught Mr. Packard, it couldn't just get rid of him underwater and keep feeding. Humpbacks are built to close their mouths tightly when they dive, so water doesn't rush into their lungs. To open up wide again, release pressure and breathe, they have to reach the surface. They gulp air, clear their throats, 
spit out unwanted passengers, and go back to eating like nothing happened. It's actually a cool design from millions of years of evolution. Whales used to live on land long ago. Their ancient ancestors looked a bit like furry hippos that wandered into the ocean. Over millions of years, those animals adapted to life in water. Their legs became fins, their noses slid to the tops of their heads, but they never stopped breathing air. That's how evolution works. It doesn't recreate something from scratch, it adapts what's already there. This evolutionary coincidence was what, in the end, saved Mr. Packard. After the whale spat him out, Packard floated in shock for a few seconds before realizing that everything was fine. His crewmate, who'd seen the whale breach and fling him out, rushed over and pulled him into the boat. Thankfully, aside from bruises, he was fine. The diver was taken to the hospital, treated, and released on the same day. All is well that ends well, and now he has a fascinating tale to retell to his friends. While a humpback whale couldn't swallow Michael, there are a few creatures on Earth that technically could, at least on paper. First on the list, the sperm whale. It's the only animal alive today with a throat large enough to swallow a whole person. They regularly feed on giant squids up to 30 or 40 feet long, so one human wouldn't even count as an appetizer. Luckily for us, sperm whales live in deep waters and only eat squid, fish, and the occasional unlucky shark. Humans aren't even close to the right shape or taste. On the land, we have the reticulated python and the green anaconda, the largest snakes on the planet. These reptiles don't chew, they swallow. A full-grown python can stretch its jaws wide enough to fit a deer or a pig, and an anaconda can take down a capybara. There are unverified reports of them swallowing people, mostly in remote jungle areas. But even if it happened, it would take hours, and the snake would struggle to digest such a big meal. Unfortunately, snakes don't have the same diaphragm or ticklish response like mammals, which means you wouldn't get out of this predicament by tickling the serpent like in a cartoon. And that's about it, lucky for us. Unless we go back in time, way back to prehistoric times, to an age when the oceans and continents were crawling with bigger creatures. Back then, the ocean was a lot more dangerous. The Mosasaurus ruled the seas like a super crocodile, and the Megalodon, the 60-foot prehistoric shark, could have swallowed you whole without noticing. But land wasn't much safer. There was the Dinosuchus, the giant crocodile, the Titan Boa, a snake longer than a bus, and the Sarcosuchus, the super croc that made rivers unsafe for anything that moved. Michael Packard lived through a story that sounds perfect for an Instagram reel. He had a unique and dangerous situation and ended up with only bruises and bragging rights. The ocean is full of surprises, but as long as you're not a small fish or a time traveler, you won't end up like Pinocchio, making a campfire inside a large stomach resembling a cave. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.